project specific discount rate. Okay. If you understand uh, what we talked before, um, a company can use its uh, cost of capital to discount all its ca future cash flow or relevant cash flow to determine the, whether the project um, is good to invest. Okay, whenever the net present value of the future of the cash flows is positive, then it is suggested to invest because it can help to increase the shareholder wealth. Okay, it's the basic principle uh, we just mentioned about in the class one. But in some case, in some case, um, some investment projects, their risk level is different from what the company is or the company is investing. For example, um, if a company is running a business, um, like a department store, okay, the, a retail, okay, department store like a retail business, but um, it has the cash or surplus funds in one day, um, the management decide to use its surplus, uh, to use um, the fundings or the, uh, you would like to, to invest, they found an opportunity to invest a project, which is not a uh, department store, uh, it would like to invest in a real estate project. Then real estate projects, the risk level is different from what they are doing in the supermarket business or department store business. So they will, or they have, um, to use different discount rates to evaluate the new investment projects, uh, net present value, whether they need to consider, okay, if uh, applying a different discount rate to discount the cash flow to see whether the net present value is positive or not. And it is the project specific discount rate for a company. Okay, so background is a project, investment project, differs from the business risk of the investing company and different return requirements from existing business operations. Because just an example, department store is different from real estate. You have different investment projects, you have different required uh, rate of return. So um, if you are using the existing cost of capital to discount um, a new investment project's cash flow, it is not appropriate. Okay, as we mentioned, because the business risk is about the business risk is different. Okay, for cost of capital for the WAC, um, if we apply uh, the WAC, then it means they have the same risk or business risk level. Same business risk or not level, same business risk. But if you have different industry or different investments, they have different industry, then you have to apply different um, discount rate. So here, we just learned capital asset pricing model, remember? And capital asset pricing model is giant in terms of risk. Okay? We talk a lot about risk. Okay, we talk a lot about systematic risk and systematic risk. We talk a lot about business risk and financial risk. So for business risk, okay, we just learned before, asset beta, equity beta, remember? For asset beta is about the business risk. For equity beta, yes, part of equity beta consider business risk plus financial risk. Okay, I hope you still remember. And then for the CAPM, okay, it's good um, to apply CAPM in estimate or to calculate the project specific discount rate because it consider business risk. So what's the steps? What are the steps in calculating project specific discount rate? Um, just using an example, I would like to quote, for example, if you um, if a department store, a company operating a department store, uh, you would like to invest in a real estate project, then it has to locate a suitable proxy companies. A proxy companies means, okay, a proxy company means, to, is it a, Another department store
or a real estate company? Okay, it should be a real estate company, right? The proxy companies means you have to use this, use that company, the proxy company, to estimate the project is specific discount rate. That means you have the same business risk level. Okay, you should have the same business risk. So you have to find a proxy company that the same business, uh, the same business as your investment project. You'd like to invest in real estate, and you have to find a proxy company in the real estate, and determine the equity basis of the proxy companies, their gearings and tax rates. Okay, coming back here, for equity basis, it can be estimated. It can be estimated or it can be calculated it can be calculated based on market information okay it can be calculated based on the market information because the equilibrator equilibrator is the relationship between an individual company share performance and the market rate of return. Okay, it's the relationship between individual company share price and market return okay so equity beta can be found by the mark by the market information if okay you find a listed company listed company means the, the company is listed in the exchange in the stock exchange then you have the share price information for this company and then you find the market portfolio return of that particular market maybe okay then you find the relationship between these two um, parameters you find the equity basis okay so it's, it's observable or it, it can be calculated based on um, the market information and then you can find that there are any reports or, um, or um, um, some market information. So what's the proxy company, the gearing, and tax rate? Okay, you have if you have these numbers, then you can work back to get the act the asset beta. Okay, because the equity beta, as I mentioned, it includes both business risk and financial risk. Okay. So the first step is to ungear the proxy aggregators to obtain asset beta, as I mentioned. Okay, because asset beta cannot be observed unless there is a company listed in the stock market without any gearing. Without any gearing, the aggregate is the same as asset beta. Otherwise, if the company has the gearing, the aggregate have to be ungeared. To become asset beta's and four is calculate the average asset beta okay if you have more than one company you can take the average simple average okay mix for example maybe if you have only one proxy company then you have to just apply this proxy company asset beta and five we gear the asset beta it means you put back or you consider your company capital structure or the project financing on the project capital structure 
Okay, so use the CAPM to calculate the project specific cost of equity. Okay, CAPM here. Then we can find the project specific discount rate here. So uh, there's an illustration, uh, quite long. So you have some to take some time to read it, and then we come back. You can pause it, and then we come back to explain the details to you. Okay, welcome back. And here. Uh, we would like to show you how to get the project specific discount rate based on the information provided. Remember the step, okay? First of all, you have to find the proxy company. And then is first step, and the next step is to ungear they are equity beters. into asset beta. Okay, so we have the company A. How to get the asset beta? It has the equity beta 0 0.81 times its market value of equity divided by the total value of the company in market value. Okay, just put in the formula. Okay, here is the beta equity portion and the other is the debt beta. Okay, um, just one point we'd like to highlight. If the question don't give you any debt beta information, you can assume that they, the debt beta is zero. So there's no need to consider any debt. There's no need to consider any debt, any debt impact here. So once you get um, this formula in, then your asset beta for company A is on six point six five seven for company B the asset beta is follow the same logic. Zero point six six eight. Okay, so company C same logic. And you got zero point six eight two. Okay, so we got these three numbers. We got these three numbers. Company A, company B, and company C. Uh, just like the average. Then you got. Zero point six six nine is the average, the asset beta average. Okay, 
So we use this number to the next step. We got the asset data. On six six nine, and then we we gear this asset beta into equity beta. Okay, because we have to use the com the company specific financial structure or the capital structure, so we got the. As a beta is the business risk in the this new uh, in this investment, the business risk times is is the equity beta times the company financial structure, which is the market value of is equity is seventy, and uh, market value here. Assuming that beta is zero, so you got point six six nine divided by point seven sixty nine. So equity beta is point eighty seven. Applying the capm. Okay, last but not the least is applying the capm to get applying capm in the calculation in the project specific discount rate. You we got the formula. Right. So here is four percent. This risk-free rate times the beta, the equity beta is zero point eighty-seven times the market risk premium or the equity risk premium is six percent. So you got nine point twenty-two percent is the. Cost of equity. So the project specific discount rate is nine point twenty two percent. Okay, let me have a quick, um, quick review on our calculation. Okay, based on this example, uh, you are required to calculate the project specific discount rate um, because it's a new investment to your company. It's in another business or industries. Then you have to find a proxy company first. Um, next step is to ungear the equity beta into asset beta. So the first step, proxy company. Next step is ungear the equity beta into asset beta, and you take the average uh, for those proxy companies. You get the numbers, and then you put this asset beta to apply this asset beta into your company uh, because you have to use the equity beta to find out uh, your cost of equity. Then. You regear into the equity beta based on your capital structure. You get the equity beta, and applying the capital capital asset pricing model, you can get the cost of equity. So remember the steps to follow in order to make sure you can get the project specific discount rates.